Hi, welcome to Stirring the Cauldron again. We promise we will get an intro sometime soon. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm Kai. And today we are going to be talking about how to keep skepticism in a mystical space. Discernment is really important and like nobody wants to discount another witch's like actual lived experiences. No one wants to sit there and be that dick. You don't want to sit there and say like, oh, just because I haven't experienced that doesn't mean that you know, you haven't experienced that. Because, I mean, we, we've grown up in a very much like magic isn't real. You guys are like playing pretend and stuff like that. Am I crazy? Do I need meds? You know, but also there's a lot of grifters in our community. There's a lot of people who are in this in order to fleece gullible people looking for enlightenment guidance or whatever in order to get all of their grubby little paws all over your money and are not being authentic. So how do we practice discernment in a mystical space without being a turbo douche? And that is our discussion for today. So you've had a lot of experience with this, because Kai, because you are um, very active on TikTok. I am. Go follow me. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely go follow them. They are amazing. Hey, Please I'm go follow them. You can follow me, but I think I haven't posted in like a year. I think so, yeah. But I mean, this is a very common problem on TikTok is the lack of discernment. Um, And you can't tell me I'm wrong because it's my own lived experience. Now, yes, correct. Um, But also, this is why I have never talked about this on TikTok because it is such a nuanced thing and you have to have the time to actually talk it. Right, on TikTok, you've got three to 10 minutes and I would take up the 10 minutes and be like, fuck, I'm not even halfway through my first point. So that's the issue. But there are so many people who have seen TikTok, seen the opportunities for followers and money and everything else, uh, and been like, okay, cool. I'm going to pretend to be a spiritual guru. I'm going to pretend to know what I'm talking about. We're going to look at someone in just a little bit. It's not quite time yet, but we are going to look at somebody who uh, very much in general has like decent content, but then we'll throw out something that's so out of left field and dangerous information, probably because they know it's going to get them views and clicks. Or maybe, maybe they genuinely believe it, but it's because they don't have discernment themselves. And I promise this is not turning into a React channel. It's really not. But I do want to start having a bit of a witch talk segment because um, I'm on TikTok a lot and Jen is not. And I do in real life often be like, look at this, he, 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 isn't this stupid? And she's like, oh, I hate everything. So I feel like that would be fun to engage with. <laughs> hey, we're stirring the cauldron. We're talking about what comes up, but it's also because of the shit we threw in. Yes. So like, like I said, I mean, I know this almost seems counterintuitive to what we've talked about before, about being true to yourself. Don't let other people tell you what you can and cannot do. Do not let other people discern what your magic is and shit like that. And that is still a hundred percent all applies. And if someone is honestly, wholeheartedly, authentically being themselves, then you can tell. Yeah. You can tell that they are not, you know, blowing smoke and rainbows up your ass. I think the part that pisses me off is this all or nothing attitude of like, either we accept everything or we're not good witches or we're, we're just haters and we're not authentic. And like, you know, I don't get me wrong. I know there are dozens of paths and dozens of ways to do shit and stuff like that. But like Christianity has their televangelists. We have our own version of pagan televangelists. They just usually are on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. Okay, they don't, they don't have their own network because we're not that big. But we have our Pat Robinsons. We have our Joel Allsteins. We have our grifters who are sitting there talking about you funding their money and all of their other shit. People are opportunistic assholes. Just because someone calls themselves a witch does not mean that they actually are. Just like with those assholes, theirs are not honestly true Christians. Everybody knows this. But a bunch of people believe they're bullshit because it makes them feel good. Just be aware of when you are listening to someone and hearing them spout off things. I mean, there's nothing wrong with somebody who like, I mean, hell, you're fucking listening to us. I'm asking you to listen to me and then telling you don't listen to people. I mean, come on, I mean, fuck. Again, it's nuanced though. It is, it's so nuanced. Back when when I was a baby witch, everyone used to be told, read, 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 read everything. And people are like, well, what book should I avoid? And some people will tell you, oh, don't read this and don't read that and stuff like that. Well, a couple of like older, like cool OG witches I knew were like, no, read the bad shit too. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why, why read the bad shit? And they're like, so that you can recognize bullshit when you see it. So you can sniff it out. So you can recognize sloppy thinking. And so that you can sit there and go, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, that's stupid. Before you accidentally do it yourself and it blows up in your face. Take what you would take in a normal secular space and apply it to the witch talk space or the Instagram space or the, even the YouTube space. If something is like, it doesn't pass the smell test. If you're starting to feel a little skeptical, don't feel like a hater. Skepticism and ick feelings in our guts are right, you know? And I am going to straight out say that 
there should be a little gatekeeping in our community. I fucking said it. Y'all can come for me. You know, burn me at the stake outside my house. I really don't give a shit at this point. There should be gatekeeping. I'm sorry. We should not just blatantly accept anybody. He goes, <laughs> I'm a witch. Give me money. Well, because that's the thing is that it gets dangerous so fast and that's why it's so important to speak out and not be like oh no people are gonna judge me for this it's the same kind of people who are actively harming our community like the people who are like you know the, the, the stories you hear about the psychic on the side street of la you know and they like pull you in and they do a reading for you and they tell you that you've been cursed and you have to pay five thousand dollars for this candle and then call them every day to make sure that they know and, oh but those phone calls are paid but like oh, God, they can't so help that mm -mm. And that's what actively turns people against like, oh, well, all psychics are scammers and blah, blah, blah. And like, this shit isn't real. I'm going to come in and be a skeptic or whatever. But like, also it gives us actively a bad name of like, no, like, what do you mean you do that for a living? No, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. It actively harms us, but it also like prevents other people from getting genuine tarot reads and knowing what it's supposed to look like. Because if you knew what it was supposed to look like, and then you met that psychic on the side street of LA, you can immediately be like, mm, no, this is bullshit and get the fuck out of there. But if you didn't, and then that was your first experience, it makes sense that then you, you then go like, mm, no, all of this doesn't really make any sense to me. See, the problem with this whole thing is the fact that for years, the idea of the fortune teller on the side of the street, you know, working for coin, you know, the Miss Cleos of the world. Come on, who here? I mean, I know I'm dating myself here, but who doesn't remember Miss Cleos like late night infomercials? She was caught in this massive scam. Everybody knows who Sylvia Brown is. Come on, she was like the old lady psychic who was like on all the talk shows talking about how she could find lost children and fuck shit up. There's always at some point in some place. Please, please do the I'm research. I'm like, I haven't heard of any of these people, but I believe it. Oh, fuck am I old? <laughs> God damn it. But no, like back when I was younger, before we had everybody on their mind, there would be late night infomercials of you would call in for these psychic hotlines and like find your future. And it was like $5 a minute. It was like, it was like metaphysical sex lines, you know? Okay. You know what? I think something that you, you TikTok and young generation would recognize from is, and I'm sorry if this gets us demonetized. I really am. But like, does anybody remember the prolapse song video? I think it's okay. We're not actually monetized yet. So do you remember that song, you know, like, like, oh, 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 oh my garden, the prolapse video. Anybody who's ever been on the internet for a minute has recognized it. Well, they actually use Sylvia Brown's like overly makeup face as like the face for the CGI on that. It's fucking hilarious. But like she claimed to be a medium with psychic abilities. She would go on talk shows. She would like unsolved mysteries and other shit like Montel Williams and Larry King and Sally Jesse Raphael back in the days of like daytime radio. She was on Oprah. She would talk about like contact grieving families of missing people and claim she knew where the bodies were and shit she sold hundreds of books there were dozens of freaking people stay-at-home moms who lapped that shit up like it was crazy she was known for claiming to find missing persons and then it would make headlines and people would talk about it and then it would prove out like oh wait she's full of shit eventually towards the end of her life she caught a lot of flack and was seen as exploiting grieving families because she would ask for fees she called them donations and things like that and she would get these people's hopes up and usually these things normally started happening right around her latest book release mm. And it was really, really disgusting. And this is why people have a dim view of divination. This is why people have a dim view of tarot readings because of the Miss Cleos and the Sylvia Browns and all of the daytime talk show psychics who claim to work with the FBI to find missing persons and have always been proven to be wrong and things like that. It's like, first and foremost, divination doesn't work like that. No. Second off, growing up in a secular society that is highly religious but it is sanitized that's the funny thing about our society is that we grow up in a very christian peri patriarchal but it is so sanitized there's no mist i mean they'll talk about the power of god and jesus and thump that shit but you know those motherfuckers don't actually believe it if an actual burning bush showed up in front of those assholes they'd probably witchcraft. witchcraft and the devil and like run away so like the idea of actual abilities like i mean don't we'll go into faith healers and stupid shit like that probably later with another kiss of this but like the power of persuasion is hard and it's big and at the same time we scoff and poo-poo at the idea of anything being any remotely spiritual magical or anything like that but there's something in us that wants to believe we want to believe there's something bigger than ourselves or something you know 
mystical and we want to have that faith in things it's why you know tent revival snake handling faith healing falling in the aisles shit still mm -hmm. happens even though they claim that that's the devil worship but like except it's, it's different when we do it out in the tent in the alabama woods you know so it's understandable why people get sucked in with the idea of someone giving us some insight and vision into the unknown and unfortunately desperate people are willing to do whatever they can in order to feel like they're in control of their lives. And so come grifters, come people who will come in and claim, I can give you all the answers. I'll tell you everything you ever wanted to know. I'll let you know what great aunt Ethel really wanted you to know. And they prey upon people. They prey upon those. And now this is not to say that those of us who do divination, because I do tarot readings. I so do, do pay I. tarot readings. Yeah. I expect to get paid from yeah. my work. Now this doesn't mean that for the effort and work that I put in, I should not be given money. The problem comes is when people start using their gifts to exploit people's tragedy, insecurities, and pain. I have a perfect example of this because someone tried to do that to me uh, and it, it turned me off to the whole thing. Uh, this was a while ago, but uh, I was in my manifesting era. As we know, I've been through a bunch of shameful, eras we talked about my love and light bullshit last time uh so this was after that i thought i was out of it but i was like i was manifesting everything now listen to some degree do i still believe in manifestation sure but nowhere near the level that it, it had been sold to me at the time i followed someone i don't even remember how i fucking found her anymore but she was on instagram i don't remember her username i just remember her name was like samantha or sam or something like that um and she was very like new age hippie type deal if that tells you anything about her um she was also pretty and i think i probably had a crush on her it's fine um but she had a thing where she was like yeah i'm like a spiritual coach and like a guru and whatever um and i know that there are bullshit ones but there are some people who actually do it and actually know what they're doing and everything else and so it's like okay i'll follow her never bought any of her courses and then she did a thing where she was like you can get one of these courses for free i'm, I'm gonna do it as a, a random thing whatever so i got a free one and we sat down and it was like 45 minutes or something and we were talking about where i wanted my career to go and everything else and i was actually talking about wanting to be a professional tarot reader at the time which i am now we were talking about manifestation and she she was helping a little bit but i noticed while we were talking that it was very just kind of like she seemed like she was making it up as she went along like it was very much like i would say something and then she would circle back to it later like it was her own idea so that was red flag number one it, it was very sus the whole time but then at the end she was like so can i sign you up for one of my courses because i think it would really help you and i'm like i don't have the money for that right now bro it was like 400 dollars for one class like it was a fucking lot and i was like i'm sorry i don't have the money for that right now um you know i'll i'll, I'll take this though and i'll See what I can do with it and you know maybe at some point down the line I was bullshitting I was never gonna pay four hundred dollars for a fucking course but I was being polite I was trying not to be an exactly. asshole is what I, I'm I having that. fucking manners my dude mm, what a concept anyways after I said that she looks me dead in the face now we were online thankfully but she looks me dead in my fucking face and she's like so see that's one way that you are embracing your lack mindset is that you are you know saying that you can't afford it instead of investing the money that you have in into making your future more fruitful. So like, are you sure? Dude, that's the exact same pitch they give you from an MLM yes, hunt. Dude, exactly. She may as well be selling Amway. Yes. Oh my God. And I immediately, I was like, mm, no thanks. And I left the call and I unfollowed her ass. And I was like, cool. I even have a video. It's up on the same channel back when it used to be my coffee cat channel, uh, where I was talking about manifestation being a pyramid scheme. That is literally what that video is called. Manifestation is a pyramid scheme. And I talked about that in that video because what the fuck, like, why is it so sketchy and so schemy? And so like, uh, that you're not investing in your future because you can't pay me $400 to sit here and bullshit with you and look hot. Like, what? Yeah, see, and that's the part that pisses me off because, like, honestly, people should be able to be paid a coin for their knowledge. Like, if you're going to teach a class or something, don't have any reservations about paying for it. Trust me, I struggled with that for years because of shit like this. Because of the Starhawk correspondence. That harms the community, exactly. It does. It harms the community because you feel like you're being predatory. And also, there comes this... I used to have a really bad worry that I never wanted to charge for my tarot readings because 
Then I would almost afraid that I would subconsciously be compelled to give them what they wanted instead of giving them the truth because they're paying me. I've luckily gotten the fuck over that, but that they're paying me, not somebody else to bullshit them. So the problem that there comes is like, of course, you want repeat service. And if you're fucking shit's coming up and you're sitting there going like. Yeah. You know, do you really want to tell this person all this shit where the powers that be are about to bitch slap you upside your head because you know they're going to say that's bullshit and they're never going to come back to you again? How do you maintain your integrity? How do you maintain your skepticism? How do you maintain a actual like working community where I can give you, get put out my services and get expect to get paid without being called a fraud because of things like this? And also like not feel bad for charging a decent amount of money for my skill and expertise. So just because somebody charges does not automatically make them, I'm going to make the young people cringe, makes them sus. Yes, I'm using slang, it pisses my kids off. But like, it does not make them, it, honestly, it does not make them shady from the beginning because you know what, earn that back. Say that you do pay for a reading, you pay for a service for somebody from some form of divination or magic. And afterwards, you just kind of feel like they just shouted banalities at you and like just median type shit that didn't seem very pertinent to you. If it sounds like something that could be on a fortune cookie or one of those carnival like Madame Fortuna things and it comes out on a card. If it sounds like something like that where it can easily apply to any situation in your life where there is nothing at all specific, then you're allowed to sit there and go, that didn't really seem insightful. My dad was a salesman and shit so he was a pro at this shit. He used to work in the car business. Learning how to read people's tells and what they want. You can tell just sometimes through casual conversation exactly where their brain is at and what their mind is at and like especially if you have intuition and magic and my dad was a witch and didn't realize it that's an entire other story that one's a really big interesting one but you can pick up on what somebody's fretting about what they're worried about what their concern is where their energy is going and if you know where that's going then you can kind of poke and prod and get an idea now this is not to say that you know why we don't do that in divination because i mean Honestly, the tools are merely a way for us to focus the energy of what we're actually doing. But you can all, scam artists can actually do that just from you unintentionally volunteering info and them twisting it around, like Kai said, and making it seem like, oh no, I have this insight about you. And you're so caught up like, oh my God, that's so true to me. That sounds, I'm such a Pisces. Ask pointed questions, ask for specific guidance and see if they can give it to you. If they can't, now this is not to say that the person is, is not legit if they can't give it to you because I sometimes get what I lovingly refer to, I swear I'm going to trademark this thing as the cosmic fuck you. The cosmic fuck you pops up whenever I do a reading is when somebody asks a question they already know they're not supposed to get guidance on. This is something you're supposed to do yourself. This is something you're not supposed to get help with. You know this, I know this, everybody knows this. You know what you're supposed to fucking do, but you're not doing it. So the universe is sitting there going, fuck you, I, uh, no, no. So it's just because, it, but see, I'll blatantly tell them that. I'll straight up say, um, you just got the cosmic fuck you. What the fuck, you know better. You know you weren't supposed to ask that question. And then the people go like, oh shit, really? I well, and that's the difference is, how transparent is your reader being with you about the blockages? Because I can go all day and be like, yeah, I see your grandfather here and he's talking about this. He's showing me this. He's showing me that. Like, oh, I'm getting all this information. That's great. But also at the same time, there are inevitably going to be blocks. And I always, I usually just say like, I'm hitting a wall with that. Or like, they are being so stoic. They won't tell me. I actually had a friend I used to do readings for um, back when, because I was in California. And every time I did a reading for her, you met her actually. It was Danny. Hey, Danny, if you're watching. Oh, um, hi, Danny. Every time I did a reading for her, her aunt, she had a grandmother who would stand like this. And then she would have her other ancestors <laughs> sitting around and they would all kind of have a similar vibe, but it was mostly the grandmother like leering over me. And the first time I did a reading for her, I was like, it is crickets. Like I'm getting nothing. It was like pulling teeth to get a single fucking message. No cards were falling out. And the ones that did, I was like, that doesn't feel right. That's not correct. And like, I just kept reshuffling me like, what the fuck? By the end, by the time I was about to leave, I got like the greatest, fullest message for her. It was partly we found out because she already knew. <laughs> Why are you asking me? But it was also because her ancestors are untrusting and like they don't want like they didn't want her to go outside and get me to do a reading for her. They wanted her to come to them and ask directly. So they were like, other people don't need to know our fucking business. But by the time I developed a relationship with them and, and they trusted me, I was able to get that message out. Being honest about that is I think the most important thing because if I hadn't told her that and I've been like, I don't know, I'm not getting anything anyways, bye. Like <laughs> she would have been like, okay. And we were friends, but still 
And imagine if we hadn't been. And that's the other thing too, is that like, not everybody is going to know anything about tarot when you go and get a tarot reading. So this doesn't apply to everyone. But for me, one other thing that I like to do is I will show you what cards I'm getting when you're doing your reading. I, I'll be like, oh, I, I've got the two of pentacles here. So to me, it's normally this, but to me, it's feeling like this and it's about this section and blah, blah, blah. That way, <laughs> you know, I'm not bullshitting you and I know what I'm talking about because I have also had readings and seen other people have readings and seen collective bullshit readings on TikTok and YouTube, which we can talk about, um, where they'll pull up a card and it doesn't mean shit. Like they'll pull up the two of pentacles and instead of being like, this is about balance and like, you know, balancing your home life and like, you know, trying to find a good place with your finances, not throwing it all away or, or hoarding it all, like finding a good balance. They'll be like, oh, this means you're about to get rich. Like, girl, no, it does not. That is literally not what that means. No, and that is no, no. The two of pentacles is about fun. It's, it's totally like, it, like I tell everybody whenever they're learning to read tarot, Dude, pay attention to the art on the card. It tells you exactly what it That's is. Like, okay. the whole point of getting different decks in the first place. And like my deck, okay, I use the Celtic Dragon deck. If you all want to look it up, it's beautiful. I love it. I've had the thing for 20 plus years. But like on mine, it's a, it's a woman holding two pentacles on her hand, walking across a log across a chasm and she's walking across it and she's holding each pentacle on a rope like a like a scale walking across it. Now, however, where it falls on my thing, I can depend on where it goes. Like that is like, oh bitch like um retail therapy can be fun sometimes but we really need to learn to rein that in or if it's somewhere else it's like okay you honestly feel like you're walking a tightrope you feel like you are constantly having to it depends on where it goes but like how the art jumps out at me i know the basic overall meaning of the card but it depends on a where i have it in my spread b what the question is being asked but the overall like it would you're not going to get a two of, two of pentacles unless it is pertinent to the question just like I fucking hate the Three of Swords. That shit shows up all the time. It's not a great card. <laughs> for example, I've got my Halloween deck in front of me. It's very festive. It's also Loki's deck and it was my main deck for fucking years. So this is my go-to. This is the kind of imagery I like and this is why. So this is the Fool. This is about, you know, new beginnings, starting fresh, like whatever. Like, you know, you're on a new journey, right? It's literally the Fool's journey. It's the beginning of the Major Arcana in that sense, right? That's also how I read as I look for the images. So I know that about this card. But am I focused on the moon who's smiling down at him? Like, finally, like your deities are saying, it is about time you finally made the choice. Am time. I focusing on the cliff in front of him? Is he scared that he's going to fall off or he's not paying attention to the dangers and he's rushing right in? Am I looking at the fucking luggage bag in the background, right? Oh, you are leaving behind so much baggage. Good for you. Like, what am I focused on and what feelings am I getting while I'm looking at it? That's what's important. And that's something that a good tarot reader will do for you they will explain in depth what this means why this is here why this popped up and what the interpretation is for it they are not just going to be like give just like the same thing for no matter what card comes up they will let you know like what this is supposed to mean they will let let you know like okay well this is inverse and it usually means this but when it's inverse it means this and like they will go into depth and in explanation on what it is and okay there's nothing wrong with having a crib sheet if you are getting a reading do me a favor every time that you go get a reading please have biddy tarot on your fucking phone also that's a good resource for those of you who are just brand new learning tarot and you have a neurodivergent thing that makes it so that reading the book that came with your tarot deck is as akin to rolling around in broken glass biddy tarot will allow you to look up whatever any not type of meaning was will tell you the inverse <laughs> stuff not sponsored it's not but it's a really great tool i have no problem pumping shit out that i think is cool but biddy tarot is really good for that like you can just pop it in and tell you like what what this card means so as you don't have to go so leafing through your book like where's this where's this just put it in there and like i said modern day druids would have fucking tablets and shit if they could like 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 fucking back in the day if they had like you mean i could have the sum of all knowledge on a light up screen that i can access with my finger what is that if not, if not witchcraft so like don't be afraid to have a crib sheet also i feel like when someone is doing a reading for you if they have a book and they are referencing a book there is nothing fucking wrong with that even if you're paying for a reading now if it's like hundreds of dollars and they're professing to be this like great oracle 
it might be a red flag or it might just be that they're flipping through and they're seeing keywords. I don't know. It will depend on the energy coming off of the person and you can get that in a conversation with them before you even get to the reading, I'm fucking sure. But so many people do see like, and I don't really use reference books, but I've seen so many people that do who are brilliant. And like so many people see that and immediately write it off as you don't know what you're talking about. One of my other favorite decks, it has words on it. Like, and I've been reading tarot for a fucking decade. I don't need it, but it's got words like this one, like for queen of cups, right? It says like creativity, intuition, compassion, blah, blah, blah. And that's something else I love to do. Just like with all the images on the card, I like to look and see which word am I being drawn to? What's, what's pulling my attention? Like, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Just because someone reads tarot differently doesn't mean they're incorrect, but still be on the, the lookout for red flags. Does it feel true? Is it authentic or is your your ego? Because that is something I used to fall victim to a lot. Yeah, if I would get a reading that was gassing me up and telling me I was gonna blow up and become famous on YouTube, because for a while that's what I wanted, I, I would be like, oh my God, this ring's so true. And I would click through video after video, after video of these collective readings telling me that something big was coming and I just know it and I've been working for this for so long and it's finally coming true. Oh, look at the Nine of Cups wish fulfillment over and over and over again. And guess what didn't fucking happen, bitch? And you know why? Because those readings weren't fucking real. I used to watch those and I would watch the ones about like twin flames and, and bullshit. Of course, I had a, an era of twin flames too. I'm ashamed of it. It's fine. <laughs> but like, that was such a common theme was like, you would get some people who are very much embracing the like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna give you like a sweet, beautiful, kind reading. If I'm on here, it means you have good news coming your way. But then you'd also have people popping in being like, listen, I'm not a sugar-coated reader, okay? I'm gonna tell you how it is. And then they pr proceed to give you the most sugar-coated fucking reading ever. And then they just constantly say, I'm not a sugar-coated reader, so this must mean it's true. It's like, no. And I would fall for that no. so often until I finally had to stop. I got a real reading uh, in the middle of all of that and was like, why didn't it feel as like, like, sparkly and like giddy and bubbly as like these other readings do like an asmr because you weren't having smoke blown up your ass trust me it tickles exactly because it wasn't bullshit i wasn't watching it just to boost my own ego and feel good about my life it was like no because someone's actually looking into your energy and reading it not tickling it to make you come and subscribe to them like and look okay i have the sassiest deck on the face of the fucking planet it's true she it's is hard <laughs> She is fucking blunt. Kind of, I mean, wonder why. I mean, it's been riding around in my purse for 20 some odd years and I've rubbed off on it a little bit. But no, the fact of the matter is that I am one of those, I do not sugarcoat shit. I will tell you exactly what it is, but I also temper mine with compassion and guidance. And that's another thing you have to make sure. Make sure somebody's not doing this just to get their sadistic rocks off telling you how much you suck. Like, because trust me, if you're fucking up and I reading lets me know that you are fucking up, you've seen me roast people with you my deck me with your deck i'm talking some of those oh hardcore God. roasts yes, that i did though. yeah but every single time i roasted it and I, I i i will there's been numerous times where i have laid it out and i'll be like why the fuck you fucking up like this you're like what the fuck you mean like you know what the fuck i mean and then i'll be like this 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 and this is it why the fuck you doing all this i don't know i said okay look okay look this is what you need to do da -da 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 -da. advice 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 guidance 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 this is how you can prevent this from continuing on and being a complete and utter clusterfuck shit show. And if you want to really improve your life, and I'm like, look, and if there is hope and potential in the future, I will say that. I'm like, look, and I'm not blowing smoke if it's there. If it's not, I will straight out say, like, look, if you don't change your ways and you don't stop shit, you are going to end up broken and alone. I mean, hopefully this is the wake-up call you need. Like, I will roast you within an inch of your life, but I am like that disappointed mom letting you know that you have fucked up for the last time and that um, if you don't, you're gonna be grounded for a week. It's a case of like, I'm not going to sit there and go, no, no, it's okay, it's not your fault. I will definitely tell you it's your fault. But that just because it's your fault doesn't mean you're a bad person. Just because it's your fault doesn't mean that you can't fix it. My mantra in my life has always been, and uh, there are some people close to me recently who really need to learn this, is own your shit you'd be surprised how many people have a hard time owning that when we look for tarot readings when we look for tea leaf readings or whatever aura readings we are trying to find out how we're fucking up we want to make sure we're not fucking up we want to make sure that we are doing what we are supposed to be doing we are looking for 
guidance. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know people who do it just because it's silly and it's fun and I want to see what they say and I'm like, ah, like, so true about me. But a lot of people normally, I'm looking for guidance and that is your whole point. And if you do not feel like if you got a reading, you did not get any guidance, they just blew smoke up your ass and they just tried to make you feel good about yourself but didn't give you any actual direction then what's the point? The whole point of divination is in order to illuminate your path ahead of you and figure out what's coming up. Make sure you haven't gone down that wrong path so far that you can't turn around, retrace your steps, and take the right path. So if you are not getting guidance from your readings, if you are nothing but getting feel-good shits, go get a fucking hand job or a fucking blowy, whatever the case may be. It's probably be better for your pocketbook and your psyche and is less likely to turn you into creating destructive shit, you know? Like, go buy a cookie, you know? Get some retail therapy, like buy yourself something nice because you are, that money would be better spent on something that is just a quick dopamine hit rather than thinking that you are getting guidance and you aren't. And now, if you go to a tarot reading and you realize it's just fun and entertainment and you think it's silly and you like it, then that's fine. But if you are going to these people for actual fucking guidance about your life decisions and you are making your life decisions based upon people giving you banalities and bullshit, you're gonna be an unhappy fucking camper. Divination is very good for that guidance, right? For giving you advice on like, this is what's ahead of you right now. What choice are you gonna make? Where are you gonna go? How are you going to get to where you want to go? This is what I'm seeing currently, it could always change. And because of that inherently, I cannot look at tarot cards and go, yeah, you have four weeks and one day. I can't go, oh yeah, your crush, he's gonna call you tomorrow. It doesn't work that way. Nothing is set in stone and I can't look at my cards or my divination or even ask my spirit team and go, okay, what's the exact timeline on this? What are the exact facts? What is going to happen? Is this person gonna ask this person out is this going to happen blah 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 that's not how it no. works i can tell you it totally doesn't. what energies are on both sides right and what you are doing right what you were doing wrong and how you can help the situation to turn into what you want it to be but it's not i'm not literally looking into a crystal ball and going look click play this is the movie of how it's going to be no matter what you do like you said earlier before we hopped on like recording and stuff the second you do divination and you get that tarot reading it inherently changes the course of what's going to happen and you have to make the choice at that point which is the whole point of getting a tarot reading in the first place which is also the fucking danger of these fake tarot readers on YouTube and TikTok hopping on here and being like, oh yeah, this is gonna happen. Your ex is coming back. Oh, the three of swords, that means he misses you. No, it fucking doesn't. No, it doesn't. And you have people out there who honestly believe that they are getting guidance from these people. I used to, they are convincing. They are con very convincing. And it's nice being told that, no, you aren't fucking mm -hmm. up. This is like the bad things in your life aren't your fault. Good things are about to happen to you. Just be patient when in reality, uh, girlfriend, all your fucking credit cards are maxed out. Uh, you were a crazy controlling psycho phys H5 clinger. That's why he left you. And, um, the reason that you and your mom don't talk is because last time you were at her house, you called her a bitch and left. So you're being destructive, but no, so this person's telling you you're fine. So you're not checking your behavior at all. If, if somebody's actually like feeling like, Hey, maybe I'm not making the best choices. Maybe I need some guidance on this. And they're going to somebody who is like completely and utterly full of it. And they're thinking, okay, yeah, I got the guidance in there. I'm going to do it and I'm going to implement it. And then it ends up blowing their life up. I'm not saying dictate your life based on tarot, you know, like you don't need to do a tarot reading to figure out if you're going to eat eggs in the morning. Like this fucking claimer. I have a former friend of mine. She completely blocked and ghosted me because I stopped feeding her narcissism supply. Every time something came up in her life, I would get on discord, boop, and I'd be like, fuck because i knew exactly what it was i knew that she needed reassurance and she was going to ask me to bust out my deck and do a reading for her now i don't charge friends i like if my friends come to me like hey I, jen i could really use some guidance and stuff like that i'm like sure bitch sit down i will do it and bitch is a gender neutral term for me because i call everybody bitch you can just ask hi the thing about it is is that like it seemed like every single time the moment she knew i could do readings it seemed like it was all she was hitting me up for that and telling her that no you're pretty no you're wonderful you know you're gorgeous you're amazing and when she had like legions of simps telling her this all the time if i'm sitting there and it seems like oh well what's gonna happen to my job and it kept coming up of like look girl i can't tell you i can say like hey this seems like a good idea it seems like you're on the right path it seems like you're doing putting your energy towards good things you're doing your best that's the best I could get to the point where she's asking for a reading every single fucking month. So it's like, dude, I can only do so much before the universe is going to say, no, we're cutting you off. No, you're getting addicted. And people can be. They can be addicted to the idea of having somebody 
take that decision out of their hands. I was told to do this. So if something bad happens, it's not my fault. See, and this is why as a psychic, I make sure that I am very careful because sometimes even when I'm not in a reading, I'm not even talking to the person at the time, like actively, I'm just living my life. Sometimes I get random messages about people that I know. And sometimes I decide to share them if we happen to be in a conversation, right? We've done this. I've gotten messages about you and then like, actually, um, I was told blah, blah, blah. Uh, but also sometimes you don't fucking share that information because if you do, it could make it worse. I don't know why I got the information in the first place, but that doesn't mean that I need to turn around and send it to them. It might just mean now I have a backstory for when they come to me and they always do come to me and talk to me about what's going on. And sure, I know this thing about it, but it, it doesn't mean it's their business unless they ask me for it. Yeah, and it could be just something a case of like, oh shit, somebody I care about is in a jam and they're not in the headspace to receive this info. What can I do to help them and support them? Maybe I need to do some spell work for them. Maybe I just need to say, you need to go get a coffee and hang. You know, at least it just it's something I heads up because sometimes information can be dangerous. And again, we're circling back around to where this false belief that these people aren't harmful is not true. It's it's they are harmful they are truly harmful they are telling vulnerable people shit that's not real that's not true that's not helpful taking their money which a lot of times is money that they cannot afford and they're telling them this shit and usually throwing in some sort of like hook or lead or something in order to get them to keep coming back just be aware of the fact of like, is this entertainment and, or is this something I'm really looking for? Like I know whenever I used to go to Santa Monica Pier that if I spent money on the fucking, the Midway games, that money's gone. I'm probably not winning a prize. You and know, that's none fine of that if that's your intention, but if you really thought you were gonna make a bunch of money back or get a really sick prize, like you're gonna be disappointed, which is a good segue into the next section where we were talking about information can be dangerous and these people coming online and touting things that are literally impossible. And again, I'll say it again, fucking dangerous. That's what we're gonna get into. Oh God. Okay. So I'll put the other screenshot up on the screen really quick of their TikTok. Now I am not calling this person anything. I, I listen in general, it seems like their channel is actually really good. It's mostly just tarot readings. A lot of them are collective, but some of them really do seem to be good and they seem to have good intentions. However, the video that popped up across my for you page this morning, uh, I just took a screenshot of it. I didn't download it, um, but I took a screenshot of the part at the end where I was like, bro, because the point of this video, um, it started off with them being like, uh, this is for anybody who is a jealous person. And I scrolled right past and then I went, I feel like I need to watch that. So I went back uh, and they were talking about how if you're a jealous person, it's because your mom conceived you because she was jealous. And then that got passed on to you. And now it's, it's part of you, but it's not yours. So you can release it. And this is the prayer that you can say to release it. The prayer says source slash spirit slash higher self, which it's good that they're, you know, acknowledging other paths, but it gets worse. Please remove all jealousy made by slash two slash four slash against me. If my conception was because of jealousy, please cleanse and remove it. Wrap it in love, light, and forgiveness. We know how we feel about love and light and send it in lesson form to whoever needs it regarding this. So, okay. <laughs> first and foremost, I'm going to, okay. I tried. Jen's about to rant. First and foremost, just this alone. All right. First, claim there's so much original sin on this it's sick get your judeo-christian shit out of my paganism two take it off of me and put it on somebody who needs a life lesson you are just basically trying to turn your cleansing heaven light shit into a fucking curse onto somebody else because you feel they need a life lesson you are asking them to scrape shit off your shoe and fling it randomly at somebody else how Fucking because you, you don't claim it, which doesn't mean that you're not responsible for it and you didn't cause it in yourself. You are like removing yourself from any accountability, any responsibility being like, this is because of my mother or someone else made me jealous and it's their fault. So now they need a life lesson. Okay, now maybe your insecurity is perhaps maybe deep seated in fears of abandonment and issues from your childhood. Even then it is still your responsibility and you are still responsible for your actions, trauma or not, like we talked about last episode. Okay, trauma is a thing. Trauma is something that happened to you. Yes, it could be the reason why you are behaving in a way and you are acting in a way and you're doing things a certain way, but that does not give you a motherfucking pass on your behavior. 
All you can do is look at why you do the shit you do, make amends, make up for it, apologize for it, and then move on and be a better fucking person. That's all you can do in your life. And sitting there and claiming, well, it's not my fault. I have this on me. It's not my fault. I was conceived in jealousy. It's not my fault. I grew up in like an abusive household, so I have no responsibility. Bullshit. No. Bad. That is just... I'm sorry, that is feeding into the worst, most toxic fucking absenteeism on our own bullshit that I have ever seen. This is a huge fucking problem right now. You cannot abdicate your fucking responsibilities because, oh, I was conceived from jealousy. Oh, I had a spell put on me. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Having baneful magic put on you is shitty. Sometimes can it influence you on to doing shit that you really wish you hadn't done? Yeah, can it cause harm? Negative shit around you? Yeah. The problem comes is that that shit only does so much. You can't sit there and go, oh, I imploded my entire life and like caused shit simply because somebody put a spell on me. Oh no, it's not my fault. No, you can sit there and go like, I was making the best choices and I was influenced improperly by things and I didn't check myself and I didn't find out why I was suddenly acting out of character when people were telling me I was acting out of character. And yeah, you can have sympathy for that. You can have people go like, okay, well, that's understandable, but you still caused harm. So therefore, and so taking some, like taking your bullshit and asking somebody else to go randomly fling it like dog shit at the wall on somebody else. No, that's not how this works. Remember our love and light conversation about last time? That's literally part of it. Uh, and I have some bad news. It only gets worse <sighs> from here. Hey, hon, thank you for commenting. And I'm so sorry about the struggle you're going through. Uh, if you're new to my page, I actually do a lot of energy work. And if you feel called, uh, you can ask source, your higher self, spirit, whoever, whatever you believe in. Please put my reproductive organs into divine working order and what's divinely meant for me. If it's necessary, please replace or heal any parts, organs, hardware necessary. And if you watch the third pinned video on my page, it is a bulk healing phrase. If you save it to your phone, you'll be able to read all of the words that are there. Create that phrase for yourself, make it your own, and you can apply it to yourself and ask, please apply my healing phrase to any past life that is necessary regarding this. Thanks, hon. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. To turn around and use your own platform, your own face to be like, Look how good of a healer I am. Oh my God. To fucking bullshit someone into thinking. Because someone having IVF issues, that is so real and so traumatic. I saw someone go through that. I used to have a roommate who went through that and it was so fucking hard for her. And it's a physical ailment. Remember, witchcraft is not a replacement for fucking health issues and mental health issues. Yes, can it help? Sure. Can it supplement? Sure. You are not going to repair your reproductive organs that are not working and you are sterile, infertile, whatever. You are not going to replace them or repair them. Literally what they said in their fucking video by praying to source what the fuck? And I did save um, that that mass healing thing or whatever they called it. Uh, we're going to watch it after. But my fucking guy, that was the second video I saw of theirs and went, absolutely not. That first one was like, ew, this one no. made me fucking livid. It doesn't fucking work that way. And how dare you come online and tell people, oh, you weren't able to have a baby. You just didn't pray hard enough. Are you fucking Christian or what? This is just as cold and heartless as the assholes when people either lose a pregnancy or have a stillbirth or lose a child and sit there and go well it was god's will pray to god and he'll make sure you can have a baby fuck if you're supposed to no you fuck you okay now this is not to say that fertility magic is not valid fertility magic can work if you have all the working parts and you should be able to do it and it just seems like you know the luck of the draw is just not working for you then maybe getting that little bit of push and getting that right timing on the ovulation maybe you are doing ivf or whatever i've done it and you do something to help boost it along like hey give me luck make it actually stick this time that'd be great but like, even then, it's not gonna override your physical body. If your physical body isn't capable, no. how dare you tell people that it is? Okay, I had a friend who had her son and it was great and they were trying and trying and trying and trying and trying for another kid because she had gotten some procedures and they said, look, there's, I don't know why you're not getting pregnant. You should be able to get pregnant. It's, I don't know why. You work, he works, I don't know why. And then she met me. She now has two daughters back to back who are Irish twins. If you put some stank on it, 
If you put a little magic, you grease those wheels, you call in some fertility magic and shit. If you have all of the working equipment and the power and the doctors have said, you should be able to get pregnant. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it was an energy block. Who knows why you didn't get pregnant? Because if you, medically you were sound and you still aren't having it, maybe it is an energy. Maybe it is something like that. Maybe you do need a little help in that regard. There's nothing wrong with that. But if the doctors have straight out said, I am sorry, but you are infertile. You will never have children naturally. I highly suggest you look into either surrogacy or adoption. No amount of energy work is going to change the fact that the meat space does not line up with what you want. The doctor said you don't have working fallopian tubes. Oh, well, that's just hogwash. Mm -hmm. Just pray to Jesus and he'll get you what you want. Yeah. That's about as much fucking sense as you are making. Shall we read the... Uh... The mass healing, create your own bulk healing phrase. Spirit, please remove all darkness and shine light as far as I'm allowed throughout all time and space and everywhere in between. What does that sentence even mean? But okay. Spirit, if it's in the highest good, please remove all cords, curses, contracts, spells, magic, mirages, promises, ties, findings, fear, anxiety, judgment, anger, persuasion, pressure, manipulation, ill intent. There's something that I can't read because of TikTok's logo. Sadness, oppression, suffering and slavery, wrap it in love, light, and forgiveness, and return it to its rightful owner at this current time. Wow. Yeah, see, this is what Smoke thinks about me a little bit. Shit. I was like, who's yelling? I mean, honestly, I don't disagree with him. He's correct. Spirit, please destroy all chain shackles, cuffs, cages, and unlock all locks. Wrap them in love, light, and forgiveness. If I hear love, light, and forgiveness one more time, I'm gonna fucking throw up. And return them to their rightful owner at this current time. Take a shot every time you hear love, light, and forgiveness and die of alcohol poisoning. This is the part that really got me. There were other parts that I was like, ew, and I was already livid about the other one. But this one is the best one. I say with no sarcasm. Spirit, if it's in the highest good, please remove all AI technology, alien technology. We all know that star seeds are um, a racist thing at, at the very least. DNA, bugs, trackers, microchips that do not serve me. Wrap them in love, light, and forgiveness and return it to its rightful owner at this time. Spirit, please permanently soldier close any entrance portals not in the highest good and open any and all exit portals needed. What does that mean? Spirit, please align my polarities and chakras into divine working order and put my estrogen and testosterone into divine order. Okay, they can sit there and say, oh, their stuff is good. No, this person's a cracked wackadoodle, probably drinks aged urine and doesn't bathe. These few posts are enough to be like, absolutely fucking not. And they were more recent. And that healing phrases was pinned on their profile. And I'm like, if you really stand by that to this day, Get the fuck off of the internet. You are perpetuating harmful, dangerous, disgusting shit. I'm gonna bring up something, some of the things that, that they said is like the cutting of cords and things like that. Like, first and foremost, cords are only formed with consent. For those of you who have never actually done coven work, when you join a coven, it's called being corded. You get a cord that is given to you by the high priestess and it is corded and you are bound to that coven. And this is what cord cutting is called when you leave a coven and you cut your cord. It's severing your connection to your coven. Now this is different than bindings which are put on you without your consent. But cords, nine times out of 10, are consensually given. You are actually connected to somebody. You have corded yourself to somebody. Like I had a working partner who participated in a corded hooking ceremony where four women put hooks here like straight up put a literal metal hook through their chest and had cords connected to all four of them they did that willingly that's cording cording is something you do consensually so the fact that that was thrown in that shotgun world salad shows me this person has no idea what the fuck they're talking about now asking for like a negative bindings put on you negative uh, anchors put on you things that have been put on you against your will without your consent to be removed there's nothing wrong with that but the fact that they went and found every term for that and just shotgun that out in that was negative like again cords were in there but also like ties and persuasions and you know whatever it's like yeah again i was, I was, I was kidding like the big one i saw i wanted to focus cords because I don't know many people who know what cording actually is but also the fact is that a lot of those things could be considered beneficial these could be things that are put on to you by fellow friends family that was just saying 
all blah, 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 blah. You just want to remove everything? Yeah. It's dangerous. It's like taking a Mr. Clean magic eraser to everything. If somebody who doesn't know any better, who is maybe a baby witch, probably has like a, 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 a mentor, a teacher or something who has put protections and wardings and shit on them to make sure that they are safe as they come up. Because when you are a new witch, sometimes you can attract nasty shit. And every time I've had a new, a new student or a new acquaintance who's new in there, I'll throw a little protection magic and a little like woo on them and make sure that they're okay. You just removed all that. You just had some brand new baby witch who thought they were removing negative shit, just probably removed all their protections. That ties with their ancestral spirits and their deities and their spirit guides. Because that was the yeah. other thing is it also said contracts. So if you willingly entered into a spiritual contract with a being and you're now going, spirit, remove all my contracts and binds and ties and whatever. It's like, you're just touting this, like this is totally fine. And even if it weren't their intention to make people vulnerable on their page, very well could have been. But even if that was not the intention at all, it still is happening. And you are putting this information out on the internet and pinning it to your goddamn page and telling it to someone who is already clearly vulnerable, talking about their fucking IVF journey. And you're like, now do this and remove all of this. And the fucking, the alien technology thing is something Something that really bugged me because I immediately reading all that microchips and all that shit took me back to starseeds which is inherently like anti-semitic it's racist it's harmful it's like all the reptilian bullshit and it's the right wing pipeline and the fact that that's the most recent shit on their page is like red flag doesn't begin to cover it like you are actively mm. being harmful Another thing on that too, another thing I've also noticed in the witch talk space, and it's also like, it's not only to the witch talk sphere because it's gone, it's gone mainstream and blown up because people think it's fun, but this whole face reading thing of deciding who people are based on like their nose and their lips and find out like what type of person That's they are. That's literally racism. It is what? so inherent. It's phonology. It is literally racism. It is. It is a big thing on TikTok. I've seen it. Like, well, you can tell somebody's aura by the shape of their eyes and their nose. It, okay, there's a there's a historical YouTuber that I follow named Abby Cox. She's absolutely balls to the walls amazing. And she did a wonderful video on it. I will send you the link to it on that. But like, this is the bullshit. This is the kind of bullshit yeah. that I have seen new witches get into. The idea of being able to tell who somebody is by their face. You can tell who somebody is if they have like thin pursed lips. It's inherently racist it is usually steeped in mainly in anti-semitism and the otherization of people who are not have you know white features primarily those of african descent who have larger noses larger lips you know there there's a whole huge history of this shit it's all racist a lot of these like love light healing aura assholes talk about it being like ancient chinese techniques and shit like that like that's another thing that these fuckers are doing is they are co-opting again i went on this in the love and light shit i am so sick and tired of constantly watching some blonde blue-eyed white suburbanite karen touting ancient Chinese wisdom for some racist ass shit and selling books on it and selling programs on it and selling workshops on it and how to cleanse your 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 chi and shit like that when like she lives in utah you really 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 need to stop doing that you really i mean there's nothing wrong with like if you feel a call to a particular type of path work but if it's a closed practice it's a closed fucking practice if it is a regional thing like this is not to say that if you are a white person who grew up in china like say that your family moved there like your dad got a job there and you were born and raised there and you were growing up in the culture. You're Chinese. Culturally, you're Chinese. Ethnically, you're white. So like, yeah, do what, do you boo-boo. But if you grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah, which I, why is it the fuck these bitches are always from like Utah or it's like, I get you're trying to find some sort of spirituality and the innate nature of uh, colonialism feels the need to like, ooh, mysticism and ooh, other and the other far east that's so far away and strange and foreign and mystical when because your shit is like fucking milk toast stop it that's why the victorians ate mummies stop it but that's the thing though is that the person that we're talking about literally has twelve thousand fucking followers like it's not like and i'm not picking on somebody with like 200 followers but someone with twelve thousand followers has enough of an audience that like you have a responsibility and you better fucking know it it's not like they just randomly blew up and got twelve thousand on a lot of their old videos like for months back they've been at eleven thousand. so it's not like this is a new thing to them they are well fucking aware of the influence that they have and yet they're sitting here and they're telling this anti-semitic bullshit and this bullshit of yeah if you just pray it away like magically you'll be able to have a baby and if you're not praying hard enough 
that sucks for you buy one of my classes this so fucking ties into like the whole like um i want to feel spiritual and like witchy and shit but i'm definitely afraid of going to hell so i'm still going to like throw a little bit of like ooh, look at the foreign stuff that's really mystical and shit because i don't know what i want to deal with actual like neo-paganism and heathenry that comes from my actual ancestry of Europe and the British Isles and things like that because that's too closely to the Bible's definition of witchcraft and Satanism and evil. So I'm just going to use that strange foreign shit to feel mystical and spiritual instead of actually like looking at my roots. Don't even get me started on the amount of like rainbow chakra shit and stuff like that. Like have any of you fuckers actually looked into the discipline that is required for actual like attuning and chakra work and the mysticism that goes into it and the discipline and the complete and utter devotion and what it does actually mean. This just doesn't mean like oh my god my period's not starting. Like my uh. Breaking up with a headache doesn't mean your chakras are Aligned. Isn't that part? I don't even know if it's fully closed, but I've heard that like at the very least, the version that we use is still strongly appropriated. So it's like if you're a white person, maybe just like you don't need to grab what's like just everywhere on the internet without looking into it and be like, yeah, chakra this and chakra that. Like majority of the things that we that this this sort of thing comes from were places that were forcibly colonized, and a lot of their stuff was stolen exported out and taken as like oh my god ooh, new foreign stuff ooh, it's the latest craze a lot of the mystical cultural deeply you know personal meaning that was a tied in with a lot of these practices and a lot of these techniques and things that people do was whitewashed within an inch of its life and fed to middle class and upper class white people to make them feel special and make them feel spooky and, and spiritual and shit like that. Like, don't even get me started on the fact that I will not use, okay, sorry, I will not use the G word slur, the exploitation and fetishization of the Romani people. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Stevie Nicks, but I have a hard time listening to that song. And I get what it began to be said by like bohemian and freedom and stuff like that. But like, again, this is again, tone deaf people using a terminology that has such harmful past to it and they're not afraid to dress up in this sort of thing and wear it like a costume and the traditional garb you know people are like well how can you do tarot when you know people have traced back tarot all the way back to the original romani people and i'm like actually it's been people using cards for divination things that have been traced all the way back to the romans so our average idea of what the tarot reader is is some sort of really horrible caricature of a romani woman divination tools like that like runes throwing bones cards crystals constellations that has been done in numerous cultures so that's not it and now if i were practicing it in a romani way with romani practices romani cards romani things like that and proclaiming myself to be romani then yeah that would be a problem but again you have got to stop yourself for a moment and start thinking about what it is that you are actually doing what you are putting out there what it is that you are claiming to know everybody loves to do yoga like oh stretch yourself out and like oh but a lot of people don't realize that the actual positions and things in yoga was meant to be a self harmonizing thing that was done in a religion this is like somebody deciding to do catholic calisthenics someday from like the sit seal nan like that and decided to turn it into a workout program the thing about it is is that with a lot of hinduism is better health and better mind and body and things like that and a lot of the things they do is like yes practice and you know, things like that but like i've had hindu friends who were just like i really don't give a shit if you know karen mcfuckface wants to go and go do yoga and stuff it's when they start when you walk into if it's a, you walk into a yoga studio and it's all about like stretching and health and things like that it's okay whatever cool they're doing it merely for that but when you walk into a yoga studio and there is mendies on the wall and they're acting like they are these spiritual gurus while also teaching you how to bend over and touch your toes the biggest problem with all of this harm is that again god we are tying in with like the last one so much i'm almost feeling like we're doing like a part two this is like some plague and level shit this is like i want to feel spiritual and witchy and like you have got to start understanding that you are giving out this shit to people and they think it's honest to god fucking guidance i feel like they fully believe that and i feel like they practice that and looking at their tarot videos they don't seem like they're full of shit and that's the thing and that's the danger is because they very clearly have like a rich spiritual practice but it's taken from so many things and it's very clearly going down an alt-right pipeline and they have no issue posting that on the internet putting it out to other people and being like hey all my 12,000 followers look at this this is how you should be and 
it's fine if you believe that i guess i still fully disagree with you but as we talked about last time my morals aren't your morals but at the same time you are still actively spreading harm and that's the issue it's not that this person's hopping online being like guess what guys this is how to do witchcraft cough cough i've never practiced in my life what they are practicing is colonized to say the fucking least and actively dangerous there are a lot of people out there putting out dangerous shit who are honestly believe this with their whole fucking chest and this is where the whole topic of practicing discernment or, or as i like to say calibrating our bullshit meter comes into handy when things just seem like like this like, like it's it's trying to cover be everything at once they are trying so hard to cover every single base and a single solitary was supposed to be a luck or prosperity manifestation and they're trying to cover everything remove all this thing like like the fact that it was practically a fucking capstone class thesis as a spell is like okay stepping a toe out to feel mystical and witchy but keep a toe firmly in the belief of i'm not doing this i'm giving it to the source yeah. or the spirit or the higher power i'm not actually doing this so that you can still like put like a judeo-christian framework onto it but also co-opting like eastern philosophies at the same time actively being anti-semitic and removing alien shit and micro i mean come on we hit a triple threat on the completely clueless meter. Just because someone honestly thinks like they are authentic about what they're talking about doesn't mean they know what the fuck they're talking about. Stop using TikTok as your personal grimoire. I am literally a witch talk creator, but I also agree with that. There is nothing wrong with going on there for tips. There is nothing wrong with learning from TikTok, but you have to be able to back it up. That doesn't mean you have to open up some dusty old book. Listen, I'm a huge like fan of reading, but at the same time, I don't think you have to read every single thing in order to get somewhere. Like you can have realizations. I have grown so much hearing little tidbits on TikTok and being like, I bet I could figure out how to do that figuring out how to do it and then fucking incorporating it into my daily fucking practice. That doesn't mean I opened up a dusty old book, but at the same time, I'm not going to TikTok going, okay, how do I do this one thing? And I'm only going to listen to one TikToker because that's the other thing. Get a second opinion, listen to multiple people talk about it. If something feels weird and you're like, it can really do that? Witchcraft can really heal your fucking IVF? Ask somebody else who was clearly far enough along that you actually trust and be like, hey, is this bullshit? And even then, don't just take their word for it. Like you are constantly, if you're not gonna sit down and like do research yourself, you still have to be constantly searching and getting several opinions to make sure it lines up. Cause unfortunately it's very easy to spread misinformation on TikTok. That's the shit that seems to blow up the most. Honestly, I could go on forever. I need to stop myself. Yes, I, I, I can see you were starting I'm like, okay, I'm gonna rein you in because just like you rein yep. me in, we do that for each other because you know what? This is support system. This is, this is, this is support healing. This is welcome. Hi, my name is Jen, and I have been personally attacked by Twitch Talk. Not really, but um, there's nothing wrong with going to your community for advice. It's one of the reasons why I started my Discord. I, my friend believe that the best way to learn is from other witches, and it's part of the value of Witch Talk. Honestly, it really is. There is a good side and a bad side. Good side. It's a great community. People are talking. They're having conversations. They're learning from each other. But the problem also comes is when people start doing that whole comparison shit of like, well. People in Wichita look cooler than me and they do this and that, that. And B, when people start viewing it as an authority. Look at the case like this. You have a problem with your car and you've got a bunch of friends and they all own cars. And you're going to ask them, some of them are going to give you advice. Well, I had this one something like that and I did this and well, I did something like that. And if you happen to stumble upon one of your friends like, oh yeah, no, my brother's a mechanic. I can get you, tell you what you need. And they know what the fuck they're talking about. Then yeah, listen to that. Versus your friend who's just like, no, you don't need to put water in your radiator and dilute your uh, coolant. I had someone back in California who told me, yeah, I'm a mechanic. And you know what? Technically sure he had worked on and fixed cars in the past. And like, I know my brother is not officially a mechanic, but he's built cars from scratch. He knows what the fuck he's talking about. I always used to trust him with my car before I go to anybody else, at least even just for a second opinion. So this guy, I was kind of friends with, I had just met him and he was like, yeah, I'm a mechanic. I'm like, okay, cool. And then when I brought my car to him and was like, hey, I'm having this issue. I can't crank my car. Dude is going on YouTube and watching videos on how to do this one thing. And he's like, okay, I spent hundreds of dollars on three different different parts brand new and have him replace it and also pay him it literally made it worse because he didn't actually know what he was talking about he actively fucked up my shit because i believed him discernment again this is what comes from the problem of uh, assuming something is an authority like if someone can seems like they know their shit and they verify it and they're like yeah cool then yeah take them at their word and believe what they say you know if it seems like it seems legit it seems legit but test it Trust, but verify shit. Stop going to witch talk as if it's like the fucking Oracle of Delphi or like your professors or whatever the case may be. These are people who are on the same path as you, who 
a lot of times, and I'm sorry if I'm going to sound a little ageist about this, but a lot of times are probably just as new on their journey as you are. They just kind of got a little bit of a leap ahead because of some other extenuating circumstance. Please stop comparing yourself to them. Stop assuming that they know more than you. Stop going through all the motions and shit of thinking that, oh, well, they have a platform on TikTok. They must know what they're talking about. Just because someone has followers doesn't mean they know what the fuck they're talking about. Start looking at their engagement. Look at, is there actual discussion happening in their comments? Are people actually questioning things and not getting shut down as a hater? Are people sitting there going, well, what about this and this? And they're actually getting insightful responses from people. Then, yeah, then you're probably in a good place. But if you go into the comments and it, anybody who dares question the person and they're immediately getting shut down by rabid fans or by the content creator themselves because they're like well you can't question me because i know what i'm talking about like now if somebody's coming on just being a rampaging douche tart and getting their fucking shit pushed in by the comment section that's something else entirely but douche pickles aside if it seems like anybody who has a legitimate honest question or a concern or like wanting clarification or like that doesn't seem like it makes sense to me or anything like that and they're immediately being dogpiled get the fuck out of there even that creator that we've been talking about one of their videos where they were doing a tarot reading someone commented and was like hey don't like project what you want them to be feeling onto them you keep saying i think instead of this is what it feels like or whatever so you're like you're clearly projecting onto people maybe someone resonated really hard with that video but maybe it popped up on theirs and they were like this is not accurate literally at all the creator heart reacted to both of those so it's on there and the next video they made they didn't tag the comment but the next video was and i'll put it up on the screen after this daily reminder not to project your limiting mindsets onto other people and also don't let other people project their limiting mindsets onto you just because they believe something doesn't mean it applies to you don't trust people who are you know closed-minded and not open to your beliefs blah 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 and it's like okay so you're clearly shitting on the person who just made a comment and the people in the comments were like get them it's exactly that how dare you question me it is exactly that any place that's meant to be a forum for open discourse and sharing of knowledge it has to be allowed to be questioned Critical thinking is a must. It is a hundred percent a must. And if the community that you're hanging out in, like creators page, discord, whatever the case may be, shuts down any talk of dissent of, of an opinion, that is a fucking echo chamber in order to feed somebody's ego. Make sure that you are in a space that fosters questioning. Because that's how we learn. That's the thing you have to understand in this practice is that you are going to be questioned and question things around you because we are dealing with an altered perception of what our shared reality of our society says is real and isn't. There are people out there who think that people like me and Kai are deranged, touched in the head, and are crazy because we believe that we are communicating with other spirits and metaphysical shit. Because of that, there is a hard line to try and be like, are you sure that this is because you know you, you felt crazy enough in your shit that you feel bad for calling people out and saying that sounds crazy and stupid and bullshit and like you're full of crap. And so you don't want, because you, you felt that way about you, but you're like, my shit's real. So how dare I say that's about somebody else? And even when it comes to my own personal shit, like there's been numerous times where I have heard people claiming that they have been communing with X deity or with X spirit, but the things that they are describing are not what that deity or whatever is known for. They're giving all of this other shit. And I'm like, are you sure Did you're you them? with that deity? There's shit out there that will appear to you and seem to be this certain way. And it's not what you think it is. Mm -hmm. You have to trust, but verify shit. You have to vet shit. You have to be sure that you are working with who you think you're working with. And, there, and the same goes for other witches who come in and claim a bunch of shit. You have to make sure that they actually have their bona fides, that they know what the fuck they're talking about. And even if they know the fuck they're talking about, are they making sure that the information that they are putting out there is not merely to get people to like them because it is easily slurped up, you know, sugar-coated bullshit? Are they actually putting out proper, honest to God information and shit that requires work? Because again, that comes into the problem of people wanting to be spoon fed shit. This really toxic, dangerous shit we're talking about is easily digestible. It makes you feel good. It's super duper empowering. It makes you feel good about shit. And it's easy to do. It's like, oh, I just have to do this. I don't have to put any actual work or effort or practice and dedication and shit. I don't have to look at any of my own personal bullshit. I don't have to pull out my ugly and look at it and decide whether or not I need 
what I need to do about it. I don't have to pick apart parts of myself and realize if what serves and what doesn't. And I'll do all of that actual exoteric, metaphysical, interspiritual work shit that required for the shit. I just go, spirit and source, do for me now. Yeah. Pavelese resistance is really fucking attractive. It's lukewarm and ankle deep. I swear to God, that's going to be a merch. And it's easy. But it also keeps you stuck at best. It can fuck up your shit. And I say all of this from experience. Like, that's why I'm so passionate about this, this topic. Because I have been here and I have fallen fucking victim to this. And for years, I was stagnant. Not just in my, like, witchy path, but, like, my life. Like, I, nothing changed. And I, like, lamented about it all the time. And I constantly be like, I release all of this. Oh my god, I feel so invigorated. I'm gonna become famous any day now. Or whatever. And, like, nothing would change because I wouldn't do anything differently because I'm watching all these tarot videos telling me it's coming any day now and you're going to be mind blown. It's going to be so much bigger than you could ever think. And I'm eating it up because I feel like, oh, I've done the work. Yeah, sure, I did shadow work, but not in the real world. It's still my own fault. I'm still the one that fell for that. But that's the danger of this kind of media is that it's so easy for a vulnerable person to see that and go, thank God, like that's the answer. That's all I have to do. The universe sometimes feeds you shit that seems like a good idea and it seems like something you should do and you follow it and it ends up costing you everything. It really does. And sometimes the universe, when you don't take those lessons, when you don't do what you're supposed to do, will take from you the things that you love most. And if you are following bullshit where you just, yay, you know, without any of the work, it's, it's gonna take it from you. It's gonna be harmful. It's gonna cause damage. And unfortunately, when you finally come up for air, when you finally realize like, oh shit, I have not been doing what I should have been doing, you're gonna find the things that you wanted actually in life in tatters and it's gonna be hard to clean up afterwards. My life's been derailed numerous times because either A, the universe was like, <laughs> you can take some more shit, or they felt that I wasn't learning my lessons fast enough, or somebody in my life needed to learn a lesson and me as a vehicle for it, whatever the case may be. And if you aren't doing the shit you're supposed to do, the powers that be are going to eventually come along and go, um, okay, you've chosen the hard way. And taking easily digestible bullshit at face value without any type of discernment, without any type of cautionary eye, yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. And at the end of the day, as much as you want to blame the person who did it, as much as you want to be upset that this person did this to you, that this person, you know, led you astray or whatever, at the end of the day, it was your own inactions, your own ability to check yourself when you are going and looking for information don't go to just one source go to numerous sources go to trusted people that you know and ask their opinion like hey i'm looking for information on this where did you look this up you seem to know your shit don't just sit there because somebody has glossy graphics great cutaways and a big following on TikTok does not necessarily mean that they know their shit. It's on you to do the work. It's on you to see whether or not this is actually the way it's supposed to be. And we really stirred that cauldron today, didn't we? Oh, you're the one who started it by showing me this shit. Jesus Christ. You're welcome. Well, because it pissed me off too. With that, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Stirring the Cauldron. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Come follow me on TikTok. Go follow Jen on TikTok and pressure her to make more TikToks. <laughs> and look out for our live whenever it does happen um and yeah with that being said we will uh stir some more tea with y'all next time yeah and oh um coming up might possibly be able to have a couple of things uh with kai and i in the same space because i am possibly relocating to their neck of the woods uh depending on life circumstances as they are so possibly no longer gonna have to deal with the split screen shit we might be sitting in the same room and then good luck keeping us on track honestly we will do our best uh any suggestions would be greatly appreciated but we're very excited for that um and if you guys have anything that you want us to talk about and this includes witch talk as much as jen disparages it if you have witch talk drama that you would like us to talk about please let me know uh to put it in the comments below and, and yeah anything you want to throw in the cauldron to have us stir up and start talking about feel free to like hit us up in the comments hit kai up on TikTok. hit me up on TikTok. i might actually open it up and look at it who knows in any case i'm jen i'm kai and well thank you for listening to us as we start our call y'all have a good one bye sorry that was like really mystical with my vape smoke killing the camera